today there's an old saying that comes out of the past, the Pope in your pocket. Now after the printing press, they got the Bible. The Pope was the one that spoke the word of God. He was inerrant in his words of God. According to their, their religion, we know that's not true. Now this is Pumpkin's idea here. She put the Pope in my pocket. <laughs> it's got a Bible hooked to it. And they was taking away the, the power of the Catholic Church. Yeah, when they got the Bible, they had the Word of God. Instead of just going to the Catholic Church, the Pope was telling them what the Bible said before. Constantine was the one that started the Catholic Church, and he had the first 50 Bibles compiled. Well, when King James authorized his English version, it wounded the head of the Catholic Church because everybody had their own Pope, their own Word of God in their pocket. But then the Catholics went and got their own Douay version of the Bible and it gave them power back. So the Protestants and the Catholic both had a Pope, so to speak. Now this is the only Word of God in the world today that we know of us and a few little Holy Ghost children. To the and world. To the world. Because the body is the temple of, of God. The Pope wasn't the Word of God. Anybody that had the Holy Ghost, Peter had the Holy Ghost, Paul had the Holy Ghost, James, Matthew, Philip, and all of the apostles had the Holy Ghost in them. So today, this is the temple of God. Now we want to show you something today that's very, very powerful. And don't stand before God like this. We're teaching you to be reconciled back to God and to meet God, okay? Okay, now... We reference scriptures not because we have any faith or they have any authority, but they don't, but because most people's faith is in the Bible and to show you that even the old saints told us to be led by the Spirit, but what they've done today, they interpreted incorrectly, translated it incorrectly to put your faith in the Bible and to make it the Word of God and make it in place of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, take a Bible preacher will tell you that, mm -hmm. and you think your sins are forgiven, you're on your way to hell. They're not forgiven through the Bible. <laughs> you cannot get forgiveness from a book. No. A book is not the Word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is in me. I'll tell you, I'll say when did the New Testament begin? And you can't answer because you're bound by the Bible. When the devil is using the Bible, when one of Satan's preachers or sinners is using the Bible and quoting it for authority, then it becomes the word of the devil. It's not God's word when the devil is using it. So what we're revealing to you today, you can't be saved by a book, mm -hmm. by a Bible, and preachers quoting you the Bible. If you go into some preach, priest in a booth yeah. and he tells you your sins are remitted, unto you that's a lie and you'll go to hell you'll stand before God and say God you said in your word and the first thing the Holy Father will tell you the Bible's not my word that's right see they used to carry his word around in an ark well you don't carry an ark around today you don't carry a book around today God is in us it's not written with ink it's not written on tablets of stone but in our hearts by the Spirit of the Living God that was under the Old Covenant. Nobody could keep it and nobody could be saved under the Old Covenant. And you know people today trying to keep the Ten Commandments and the words in the Bible. They fail miserably. The flesh cannot receive the things of God. You have to have God in you and He keeps His law in you. It's the only way, children, the only way. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ. Now they'll tell you that. And that's a, nothing could be further from the truth. What they're saying is you'll get a, a house and a car, a good job and a gold ring, and you'll get to go on vacations and have money. But you see, that's not the needs that Paul was talking about. Mm -hmm. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes. You need God to teach you. The Holy Ghost will comfort you. Mm -hmm. He will guide you. He will teach you. And he'll be with you forever. See, and, these Bible verses, yeah. when you see a person full of the Bible verses, they're full of the devil. That's right. And you know what? The devil, he took over this world, and he has become the God of this world, and he will do those things. He will give you the world. He told Jesus, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you the world. So he will 
do those scriptures that you tell him to do, but that's the devil doing it. Acts 16, 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And that's a damnable lie. Paul didn't just tell him that. That wasn't the only thing Paul told him. Paul told him, said, You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your house shall be saved, if you receive the Holy Ghost. That's right. And he was meaning if you believe on the real living Lord Jesus Christ, not on the history and the words in the book, you have to believe in him, the real living Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that's a damnable lie. If you believe him with your heart and all that and have the Holy Ghost, you may be saved. God gives the Holy Ghost to them that believe him. You can't go to a dead church with a preacher that's of the devil with a dead book mm -hmm. And get words out of it and be saved. I'm telling you something. Mm -hmm. When you stand before Jesus and you quote him scriptures, you're going to the bottomless pit. Right. He didn't die so you could have a 2,000 year old history book. They had that before. They carried the ark around. God anointed them old letters. All scriptures was given by inspiration of God under the old covenant. Timothy had lived under two covenants. And that's why they're profitable for instructions. Because there's nothing wrong with the scriptures. God spoke to those people and he gave the law, but the flesh can't keep it. You ha you can only obey God through the Holy Spirit. He speaks to you, you obey him, and he gives you the power to do it. John twenty twenty three, Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. And that's a lie. You can't go in to some priest and tell him you committed adultery last night and he'll forgive you if you say put five dollars in the offering bucket and you're forgiven. That's a lie. They can't forgive you of your sin. Only God in you can do that. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. Only Jesus can forgive you of your sin. Mm -hmm. He died on the cross and he'll forgive you of your sin. That was those apostles. Jesus gave that power to those apostles because it was Christ in them and they knew by the Spirit which ones to forgive and not to forgive. They had that power. No one else today does unless God gives it to them. With the Bible, a person controls what God says. They, they make the Bible say, the Bible says. And that's why there's 41,000 different denominations. That's not God saying that. But it's making their God say it. So with the Holy Spirit, God controls us. They have the Pope in their pocket. With the Holy Spirit, God controls us. Now that's true. With the Bible, a person controls God. With the Holy Ghost, God controls us. You see, God puts the incorruptible seed in us. And it takes over to take take out the corruptible seed. This is the only way you can be transformed uh, and renewed, regenerated. So you have to have the Holy Ghost. And remember what I'm telling you. This is the temple of God. You're getting a word from God right now. It's the only program I know of on earth today. Jesus said, my voice will be heard again. I'm a son of God. God lives in me. He's put many revelations in me. And I tell them to you so that you will look to the spirit and not to a book. That's right. Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now I want you to notice how powerful this Pope and this book is. If you can build you a building and get you two or three hundred people in there and they give you 10% of their money mm -hmm. because a book says so. That's how powerful this book is. That's why this harlot is rich. and She's dressed in purple, sets up on many waters. You take Joel Osteen has maybe 20,000 people. Though. What if everybody just give a dollar? He get twenty thousand dollars, and he doesn't give it to those those that have need in the church. He enriches himself. They're evil, greedy, fleshly people. They robbed his safe one day and got six hundred thousand dollars. That was one offering, uh -huh. one offering. That's what they do with this book. That's how powerful this book is, because they will give because they think it's the word of God. And I want to tell you a mystery. God's the one that done that. He let them believe the lie. He sent them strong delusions. That's right. And I said, well, why would you send them strong delusions and then get me to preach to them? He said, well, that's the same thing when I sent fiery snakes amongst them. I put a snake on a pole and made them look at it because they have to be controlled by me. 
So I'm telling you, you have to be controlled by God, not by a book. Yeah, or some devil with a book. Second Corinthians 3.3 3, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. Now this is the truth that we tell you today so you can find your way home. Now, what I want to tell you is it's the Holy Ghost way. I've been, I'm 80 years old. I've been in it over 50 some years. It's the Holy Ghost that's given me all these revelations. He told me when the new covenant began, think about on the day of Pentecost. That's when the new covenant began. The ark was gone. The tablets of stone was gone. The temple was soon going to be gone. But all of a sudden, there was a sound from heaven. And what happened? Holy Ghost come upon them just like he come upon me. And they prophesied. And it was God in them. So on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell, there was 120 Christians on earth. God was back home and his children, speaking in them, walking in them, talking in them, giving them visions, dreams, and revelations. And when Peter went to Cornelius' house, as he spoke the word of God, the Holy Ghost fell upon them. They were speaking in tongues and prophesying. The same when him and John went down in Samaria and they laid hands on people and the Holy Ghost came upon them and that was God in them. This is life. This is what God designed. And this is what Paul told them, said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And he laid hands on them and the Holy Ghost came upon them and they prophesied. And speak, this is the only way God speaks today. Now I know why you don't like the Holy Ghost. Because when Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost, they fell down dead. And when Jesus told them, said, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, there's no hope for you. And Paul said, I turned some over, Alexander and Hymenaeus, over to Satan, that they might learn not to blaspheme. Because with the Holy Ghost, you obey God. And with the Bible, you obey the devil. That's why they took the Bible. It's easy. You control God with the Bible. With the Holy Ghost, God controls you. So get this message. This is the temple of God. You're hearing the Son of God right now telling you the truth of God, that you must look to the Spirit and not to the Bible. You can't go to a church and them give you a scripture and you get saved. Jesus saves you. If you confess your sins, His Spirit forgives you. And you have to have life in you by Jesus speaking to you. His sheep hears His voice. He knows your name. He calls my name and speaks to me. This is life. This is the antinomians. That's why they hung them. Satan don't want nobody on earth with the Holy Ghost in them. Let the Holy Ghost live in you. This is a Holy Ghost way. And it's back again. God gave you this illusion that the Bible is the Word of God. He gave it to you just like He sent fiery snakes amongst them. And they hung up on a, a snake on a pole and you had to look at it. God got control. God's going to get control again. He sent you a strong illusion because you don't love the truth. So I'm telling you the truth and show you that you don't love the truth. You don't deserve God because you don't want the Holy Ghost in you. Because you can't do what you want to do. You have to do what God wants you to do. Listen to me. I'm a temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm a son of God. I have revelation knowledge from God about the Bible. About it being the mark of the beast. You don't want to stand before Jesus Christ with anything other than the Holy Ghost in you. When you go up there and he gathers his children together. And you have the Holy Ghost in you. He'll smile at you and you'll be home forever. You go up there with the Bible in you. And Satan will get you. I'm telling you the truth. I've been in the spirit world. I've seen Bible worshipers over there. And they was listening to the voice that he was speaking to me. They had never heard the voice of Jesus. All they had was a Bible. Don't go down this road. I've been in the hospitals and watching them die. They have not the spirit of God. They don't want to go home. Bible people are of the devil. I'm telling you the truth. Nobody else will tell you. Take upon you right now your mind and look to the Spirit and ask God to forgive you and ask Jesus to come to you and come in your heart and let the Holy Ghost come upon you. Thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ down on the cross. That's the New Testament. Thank you for the new covenant that fell on the day of Pentecost. Thank you that I can feel your presence as I tell these little children this truth. I pray they'll look to the Spirit and not to the Bible. I started out for Jesus Christ to run Full of joy and love for the good life Heartaches, pain and Satan kept on coming To preach these words of life there
is a prize.